Hello from Switzerland. My name is Uwe Püse. I am the head of sport science at the Department of Sport, Exercise and Health here at the Medical Faculty of the University of Basel. For our webcam presentation, we decided to choose the so-called DASH study. DASH means disease, activity and school children's health. For our presentation, we have to change the venue. Hi, I'm back now in our lecture room to give you some detailed information on our DASH study. The detailed title you can read here on the slide. You should also know that the duration of the project is from 2014 until 2017. That is to say, we are right in the middle of the project. We have two logos for our project. On the one end, you see an abbreviation, Swiss South African Joint Research Program, a program that links research in Switzerland and in South Africa. And the other logo is the word of Nelson Mandela. He said, education is the most powerful weapon that can be used to change the world, which is very true. The project is funded by the Swiss National Science Foundation in strong collaboration with the South African Research Foundation. There are three institutions as partners in the project. First of all, the Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University in Port Elizabeth. And here in Basel, there is the Swiss Tropical and Public Health Institute and our department, the Department of Sport, Exercise and Health. There's a teamwork. Teamwork means there are representatives of our department. Next to me, it's Professor Markus Gerber and Dr. Harry Selig. The Swiss Tropical and Public Health Institute is represented by the director, Professor Jürg Utzinger, Dr. Peling Yap, Dr. Peter Steinmann, and Ivan Müller. And finally, our South African partners, Professor Cheryl Walter, Professor Rosa Durand, she's the director of the School of Life Science, and finally, Bruce Darmans, he is a school principal. The study area, you can see here on the map, in South Africa, in Port Elizabeth, but not in the city, in the backyard, in the underdeveloped parts where the underprivileged kids are living, in the townships. And in these townships, the living conditions are very bad. And here we do our study. Lifestyle physical inactivity, for example, and nutritional issues, for example the consumption of high sugar and salt diets, have emerged as new leading risk factors for human health, accounting for 10% of the global burden of disease, as expressed in disability-adjusted life years. Studies have revealed that the South African population has shifted towards a disease profile similar to that of Western countries, with increasing numbers of deaths attributed to chronic diseases. Despite this shift, however, infectious diseases that are intimately connected to poor living conditions and poverty continue to occur in marginalized communities and affect school-aged children in poor neighborhoods in South Africa. The head statistician in our study is Dr. Harry Zelig. Harry, what are the study objectives? With this study, we want to evaluate the potential effects of our targeted intervention on communicable diseases, on non-communicable chronic dis uh, conditions, as well as on physical fitness, on psychosocial health and cognitive performance. Therefore, we measured the occurrence or the range of these indicators before and after the intervention. What is the setting of our study? The setting are poor communities in marginalized township areas, as you can see on the next few slides. Here, you see some kids living there. And here you can see the houses. In the front, there is still the schoolyard and there is a fence. And behind the fence, you can see a so-called informal settlement with the kids living there. For our project, we received strong support. On the one hand, for example, of the Swiss ambassador who sent us a letter, a letter of support saying, in his opinion, this project is of major importance for South Africa. And on the other hand, we received a lot of scientific support. For example, from the university lab, 
with very knowledgeable and skillful researchers supporting us down there in South Africa. Why worm infections in our DASH study? The director of the Swiss Tropical and Public Health Institute, Professor Jörg Utzinger, will give us some information. The DASH study focuses strongly on parasitic worm infections such as roundworm, hookworm. As you see on the map, uh, there is a global distribution, but mainly in Africa, in tropical and subtropical countries, these parasitic worm infections are highly endemic. We estimate that more than 5 billion people, more than half of the world population, is at risk, and more than 1 billion people are really infected, in, mainly in rural or deprived urban settings. School-aged children at highest risk of infection. Now, most interestingly for the DASH study is that we work in a deprived urban setting and there is not much knowledge about parasitic worm infections in these uh, populations. Urine and stool samples were collected to assess the burden and distribution of co communicable diseases such as soil transmitted helminth infections and gastrointestinal infections. The collection process was explained to children in their home language, which was either English, Afrikaans or Easy Cosa. The urine and stool samples were then taken to the laboratories of the Department of Medical Laboratory Science, where they were analyzed. Based on these results of the laboratory testing, affected children were treated for soil transmitted helminth infections based on the World Health Organization's treatment guidelines. To my left, you can see the disease profiles of parasite infections of the involved project schools and the region of high prevalence of two types of soil transmitted helminths, for example, Ascaris lumbriquidis and Trichuris trichura. Here, you can see a risk map with smoothed values of Trichuris trichura infection intensity based on geographical coordinates of school children's home. In order to get a comprehensive measure of the children's fitness levels, the study protocol aims to measure cardiorespiratory endurance, upper and lower body muscle strength, as well as coordination. The physical fitness testing consists of four standardized tests using the Eurofitness testing battery. The grip strength test, sideboards jumping, standing broad jump, and the 20 meter shuttle run test. And now back to Uwe. As Harry explained, there is also a second part of the study, the intervention. And for that, we switched to our South African partners, to Professor Cheryl Walter in Port Elizabeth. The DASH project intervention aims to make a valuable contribution to the health and well-being of children living in disadvantaged communities. Many of our children live in informal settlements and townships and are detrimentally affected by poor living conditions and poverty. Now we come to the intervention. The intervention consists of four parts. The health and hygiene intervention, the nutritional intervention, the physical education and fitness program, and the medication and deworming. Let's hear Professor Utzinger. He will tell us about the medication and deworming intervention. The global strategy to fight against the soil transmitted helminths is to treat children. There are enthelmintics on the market. They are often freely available and uh, given by the pharmaceutical industries. In the DASH study, we treat schools where the prevalence is above 50% twice a year schools with a prevalence of 20 to 50 percent once a year, and finally schools where the prevalence is below 20 percent, we treat the infected children. Additionally, children identified with other health conditions were referred to the health system. Back to Uwe. Part of our intervention is also a health and hygiene education. On this slide, you can see the different components of the intervention. I give you just one, two examples. One is the hand washing, and the second example is the toilet renovation program. Let's say you can see the toilets before and after. There is also a component which is called nutrition intervention. Also, just one example. 
There is the training of the food preparers who are preparing the food meal for the kids. And finally, there is a physical education program. Marcus, could you quickly explain what that is about? The physical education program consists of four components. The first component is compulsory physical education lessons during school hours. That is to say, two times 45 minutes physical education lessons during the school day. And in addition, one time 45 minutes dance classes after official school hours. The second component are fitness breaks. And the third component are playground structures. And finally, physical activity homework. And now back to Uwe. If you want to learn more about our study, you can read the study protocol recently published in BMC Public Health. Furthermore, there will be a website about our project. We have learned a lot of lessons during the DASH project. One important thing is that it is a process of mutual learning for change. Thank you for your interest in our DASH study and all the best from Switzerland.